Good morning or good afternoon, everybody, wherever you may be. Uh, thank you for joining us today. We're uh, going through the uh, waiting room admission process here. So give us just a few seconds, please, and we'll, uh, we'll be underway, and we appreciate it. All right. Well, we uh, I think we have a good number of you admitted now, so we're going to get underway with uh, today's webinar. Uh, hey to everybody. I'm Ryan Carroll. I'm the Vice President of Government Affairs for the Hearth Patio and Barbecue Association, joined today by John Crouch, our Director of Public Affairs, and Rachel Feinstein, our Senior Manager of Government Affairs. Uh, we're going to walk you through a session today, uh, which we have entitled Preparing Written Comments on EPA's Sell-Through proposal. Uh, what are we going to be covering for you today? Um, we're going to go over a little bit of the history and the background of the NSBS. Uh, we're going to talk to you about what has recently been proposed by the Environmental Protection Agency on sell-through. Uh, we're going to speak with you about the topics uh, on which EPA is seeking comment and the, uh, the topics on which we, uh, we suggest that you uh, comment if you were going to submit comments. Uh, we will discuss a, a preferred format uh, on these uh, written submissions, how to submit those uh, comments, and then we'll have, leave, uh, we think, plenty of time on the back end for questions and answers. Uh, those will be submitted through the, uh, the, the chat webinar feature at the bottom, uh, and we will answer all of the questions that we're able to, uh, and if you have any questions uh, post-webinar, we're happy to, to field those as well. Uh, just one bit of housekeeping, uh, the attendees, the, the non-staff participants here are muted on the webinar. Uh, and so again, click that chat icon at the bottom of your screen, uh, and that will enable you to send us a question. And uh, through the magic of modern day technology, we'll, uh, we'll pass that back and forth and, and be able to answer your questions. So with that, we'll get underway. <clears throat> Uh, so uh, a quick history and background of the new source performance standards uh, going way back uh, in time back to 1988 uh, you got uh, many in the industry remember the original new source performance standard covering wood stoves promulgated in 1988 and that was the law of the land for decades uh, under the Clean Air Act uh, EPA is supposed to revisit uh, if not revise the new source performance standards every eight years and obviously eight years came and went uh, after the, the 1988 proposal but eventually uh, EPA did have a, a new proposal that they published in 2014 uh, it, it was uh, you know a, a tome there was a, a, a tremendous amount of detail uh, and, and requirements and proposed uh, language in there um, including new covered product categories uh, in warm air furnaces and hydronic heaters, in addition to the traditional wood stoves and pellet stoves that have been regulated since 1988. Um, HPBA submitted extensive comments uh, on this proposal, uh, wide ranging as it was. One of the things that we really focused on uh, was urging EPA to provide sell through past uh, what is termed the step two effective date uh, which uh, was just over a month ago on May 15th, 2020. Um, May, uh, after that date, it, was, it, would, it, was, it is illegal to sell a step one product. Uh, so in, uh, going back to the uh, original proposal, uh, we, we challenged the 2015 final rule uh, in court. That's still an open litigation. Um, and sell-through was one of the issues that had been at stake uh, when we filed this challenge back in 2015. Uh, in 2018, late in 2018, uh, we had extension legislation uh, in Congress that would have granted a, additional sell-through as a matter of law on these products. Uh, we made uh, tremendous strides in uh, our first go-round of that. It's remarkable how far we did get. Uh, but with the, uh, the, the government shutdown and, and other issues at the end of the year, uh, we did uh, just run out of steam at the end of that session of Congress. Um, if you uh, are not able to get a, a piece of legislation through uh, a given session of Congress, everything is wiped clean and, and uh, you start all over. So 
Uh, that was the, uh, the, the swan song for that effort, but uh, you know, a remarkable run we had and, and did just come up uh, barely short at the end there, but the outcome was uh, still May 15, 2020, remained the last date by which you could sell Step 1 appliances. Uh, and another approach uh, in 2017 and 2018, we negotiated with EPA, uh, sell through was again part of these discussions that we had and uh, that, that resonated, we felt, with, with EPA. Um, the, the, one of the reasons we say that is because in November of 2018, EPA actually proposed, uh, a, 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 there was a, what's called a proposed rule uh, that offered two years of sell-through, that, that proposed, I'm sorry, two years of sell-through. Uh, HPBA and our members commented on this. Uh, we provided uh, insights and, and reasonings uh, why that uh, two-year sell-through period was warranted, needed, and justified. Uh, but ultimately, uh, earlier this year, <coughs> EPA uh, finalized that sell-through proposal uh, and denied sell-through relief to our industry. And that publication came out uh, in early April, uh, and we caught call, call word uh, of this in, in mid-March, right around the time of our uh, New Orleans HPB Expo. So with that, we'll go to the next slide, please. Um, so I, I mentioned the April 2nd publication uh, where EPA said they would not grant sell-through to any of the products uh, at issue at, under the new source performance standard. Uh, it was telling uh, in, in, their, uh, in the publication, uh, EPA stated that insufficient data, this is a quote from them, insufficient data were submitted to substantiate rule revision to provide a sell-through provision uh, and not quoting but also pulling from that same publication. Uh, qualitative statements asserting economic harm from stranded in inventory were provided, uh, but EPA reasoned that there was not enough in the way of actual data or insufficiency of step two deadline. And so uh, what, what we're teeing up for you here is uh, the, the hard and fast need for data and for EPA to, to make any kind of determination on sell through uh, that, that has to be backed up by data. So um, next slide, please, Rachel. Um, since HPB Expo, uh, a lot's changed in the world, as uh, everybody's intimately familiar with. Uh, but we, we uh, did not let up on sell-through, even in the face of having just been denied sell-through relief. Uh, we, we realized with uh, the COVID pandemic out there and store closures affecting so many of our small businesses, uh, in the, these crucial two months leading up to May 15, 2020, it was important that we conduct a, a little more outreach to EPA, to the administration, to, uh, to, to congressional offices as well. So uh, Rachel Feinstein, who, who you will hear from in uh, a few minutes, uh, reached out uh, to, to uh, pretty much our entire retail membership. And, and we were gratified to see 180 plus retailers uh, submitted uh, data to us that we combi compiled and, and blinded and uh, gave, uh, you know, gave real credence to our assertion that there was still step one inventory out there and that the, uh, the inability to conduct sales at the, uh, at the rate that our, our members would have expected due to the uh, COVID-19 pandemic really did put us in uh, an unforeseeable and uh, uh, you know, a, a bind that was just uh, tough to work around with uh, probably wasn't possible to work around without uh, some kind of uh, congressional or agency relief. Um, and so uh, as uh, a follow up to that letter to Congress that we sent on April 24th of this year, uh, our president and CEO, Jack Goldman, submitted a letter to EPA identifying the, the very real and very urgent need to reconsider sell through uh, in the context of lost uh, commerce due to COVID-19 efforts. Or efforts uh, due to COVID-19 shutdowns, I'm sorry, I should have said. So thank you, Rachel. Uh, we'll go to the next slide. Um, so I'm gonna turn it over to John Crouch, our uh, uh, Director of Public Affairs, and he's gonna talk to you more about what, uh, what we've seen in the last uh, month or so uh, with EPA's new uh, new initiative and new proposal. So John, I'll turn it Thanks. to you. Thanks, Ryan. As Ryan indicated, EPA has now proposed a new sell-through opportunity for both room heaters, which are in a section called AAA, uh, AAA and Quad Q or central uh, 
uh, heaters, both warm air furnaces and hydronic heaters at retail, and it would end on or before November 30th, 2020. It, was, it would be specifically offered to mitigate the impact of the virus on retailers who lost the last two months of, to sell due to closures, stay at home orders, and other precautions. We're aware that in some states, retailers were able to stay open, but everything that we've been told anecdotally is that consumers were just not in a mood to buy anything, even if the store was open, other than pellet fuel or a few odds and ends. So this election, this action allows manufacturers and retailers to recover the sales opportunities they would have had in the absence of this pandemic. It, it is, of course, unlikely to affect the total number of step one units, as manufacturing prohibition does still remain in effect. Go ahead, Rachel. Now, the question always comes, why didn't they finalize sell through earlier this year? Um, and as Ryan indicated, insufficient relevant data was submitted to substantiate a rule revision. So there were qualitative comments filed on the earlier process, but they were not supported by actual data. So for this proposal, it is absolutely critical that retailers provide actual relevant data. Go ahead. Thanks, John. So now, yep. Thanks, John. Hi, everyone. This is Rachel Feinstein, Senior Manager of Government Affairs. I'm going to review some of the topics that you should comment on in your written comments to EPA. And keeping in mind that everything should be completely COVID-19 focused. So the, EPA, the, the question that EPA essentially poses in their proposed rule from a, a couple weeks ago is what are the impacts of additional sales time? What will this do? So in your comments, it's important that you provide quantifiable data. So that's number of step one units in your possession, the market value of those units. What were your sales in 2019 between March 15th and May 15th for solid fuel burning hearth products? If you have it, what were your sales numbers for wooden pellet stoves, inserts, whatever is EPA certified for step one, what were those sales for previous years between March 15th and May 15th of each of those years? And compare it to 2020 sales numbers from this year. Essentially, your, your comments need to tell a story using data of how this was an abnormal year with the COVID-19 mitigation efforts impact and just people being afraid to leave their homes. Um, we, this is just a, a baseline of information that we encourage you to provide. You can include in your comment um, whether, like what models you specifically have, um, what your employee numbers are, in your store, what jobs might be at, what number of jobs might be at risk if you aren't able to get sell through, et cetera. Um, here's a suggested format, and we can send around this template to webinar attendees after this call. Um, we, I've, I've had a question from a, well, at least one retailer asking, can I respond to some of the things that were said during the public hearing? And I urge you not to respond to anything you've heard during the public hearing or said in passing by other organizations. Uh, you should focus on your message. During HPDA's Government Affairs Academy, uh, we talk a lot about sticking to your bases. And no matter what anyone says, always find a way to come back to your bases if you're in a doing an interview or something like that. With written comments, stay focused on these messages of how many step one products you have in your inventory, um, what the dollar amount is, 
uh, focus on any sales, promotions, advertising costs, discounts, and other efforts to sell products that were disrupted by the pandemic. Again, keep it all COVID-19 related. Don't talk about, oh, well, well last year we, we tried this, didn't like focus completely on this year. Um, definitely say how many products you had last year to show that you've been making an effort to sell products and you're at the point where we've just run out of time and need that additional sell through time. And then closing out your comments with additional sell through time, we will be able to sell our remaining inventory. Uh, we, and we'll go over in the next slides how to submit the written comments on EPA's website. Also wanna say that you should put the, your, your comments on your company letterhead or at least make it look somewhat official. If you're hesitant to reveal your, your exact address, you don't need to provide that. All, we encourage you to provide your city and state just so EPA has a sense of, of what state you're located in, so, you know, a sense of regional distribution of where there are, where people need this sell through. EPA has said in the proposed rule that they consider this a low enforcement priority. So you don't need to worry about federal EPA agency um, representative coming to your store looking for your step one stoves that you say that you have. As long as you aren't selling them illegally, you have nothing to worry about. So without these written comments, EPA will not provide sell-through. This is literally the very last opportunity to ever get sell-through. So if you want it and need it, you must submit written comments. And we've done our best to provide you with the tools you need to, to do that effectively. So with that on how to submit comments, and before I do that, John or Ryan, is there anything else you wanted to mention on what should be in the written comments? Rachel, this is John. I did want to mention that um, as I read the slide, I realized that we hadn't indicated when sell-through might start. The proposal makes clear when sell-through would end, but sell-through would start when the EPA finalized its, its proposal, which may give us two months, may give us a little more. They're going to take a while to digest these comments and, and uh, go final. So if we get sell through, the anticipation is that it would be approximately two months in the season. So it'll be a chance to really clean this inventory out. But again, as we've all said, only if they get data. Exactly, thanks John. So how to submit comments. So comments are due and EPA says this in their proposed rule that comments are due by 11.59 PM Eastern time on July 6th. There's the link to where you can find the docket on regulations.gov. And at the top of that page, you'll see a little button that says comment. So you'll click that and you'll be brought to a second page and they'll ask you to start typing a comment here. We do not recommend that you copy and paste your comments into that field. We recommend that you just write please find attached my comments. And no need to say anything more than that. They can pull your name and your organization name from your comment letter attachment. And always, always attach a PDF file, not a Word document file. So then you'll scroll down, you'll attach your, your comments. If you have attachments or anything, you can attach up to 20 files with one comment submission. Enter your email address so you receive a receipt saying that your comments have been received. And be sure to check that box at the bottom that says opt to receive email confirmation of submission and tracking number. So you receive that email confirmation and um, I'm, I'm guessing tracking number. This is a, the regulations.gov website has been updated recently. So I'm not sure what additional ability commenters have on tracking the their comment at whether they can see it's been submitted, it's been accepted, it's been reviewed, et cetera. Um, that might be a new feature. So be sure to check that box. And you'll see there uh, the 
website says we never post on regulations.gov or share your email with anyone else. So you can rest assured they're not sharing that with other people. Only your comments will be public. And then they ask you to identify as an individual, an organization, or anonymous. We encourage you to select organization if you're commenting on behalf of your company. Otherwise, select individual. We do not recommend that you select anonymous because then it's impossible for EPA or, or the public to, to tell if, um, if you're a retailer, like what, you're, what makes you a valid expert on this topic and why they should take your comments seriously. And if you're attaching a, 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 a document with your letterhead on it, it's not exactly gonna be anonymous but we do not recommend that you anonymize your comments. We recommend that you make it known who you are to show that you are an effective entity and have expertise on this subject. Uh, with that, uh, we're at questions, and I know we're very, very early, but um, John or Ryan, while we wait for questions to come in, are anything else you'd like to add? Yeah, I'll just, you know, as we look at this thing uh, uh, in, in the hole here, we know how they treated a previous sell-through proposal. They proposed it, they, you know, kind of presumed it would be justified, and then they didn't get enough comments that, that uh, were, were quantifiable, and they denied sell-through. So I, I think that's exactly what you have to prepare for or anticipate to be the case this time. Uh, they proposed sell-through, but we have to support that. Uh, if, if, if there are members of the industry that, that need sell through, the only way, uh, as, as you heard earlier, the only way that comes to pass is, uh, is through the submission of, of enough comments that persuade EPA that this really is the thing that they need to do. Um, you know, the, with all the, uh, Rachel has been obviously heavily involved in a lot of the, the CARES Act and a lot of the, the COVID relief packages uh, and, and this is it's pretty simple from, from our perspective. There are a lot of businesses getting a lot of money from the government. Uh, we're just asking for a little bit of time here. Uh, and uh, the, we, the time is needed just because uh, through no fault of your own, your business uh, was unable to, to clear out inventory that you had been on pace to, uh, to be rid of. So I will add that in only, Rachel. Great. Rachel. Thanks, Ryan. And, and real quick, everyone remember to submit your comments through the chat. In the webinar, you might need to click the three dots that say more to open the chat feature if you don't see it displayed. I'll also go back to the slide with the, the template in case that jogs any questions. Go ahead, John. Yeah, thanks, Rachel. This is perfect. I was going to speak to the template. If it's hard for you to pull out the number of solid fuel hearth products sold in previous years, just get last year. One of the other options that people have, and I've had some conversations with folks who say, boy, this seems like a lot of work. I just have, you know, three or four. Um, the implication being, mm, maybe I can find a home for those. Wouldn't you rather save those units and sell them during the season? at a fair markup rather than trying to um, do something less than, than legal uh, at a discount between now and then. Uh, your help can really make a difference here and it's in your interest. Now, if you just have three or four, one of the things you could do would be simply to list them and look up their grams per hour. Um, it's not a big deal. Um, we know that these stoves are probably not gonna make any difference in the real world uh, versus step one versus step two. But um, uh, it, it is important, of course, to focus principally on COVID impacts. And it was just one thing that you could do if you have the time and if you just have a few stoves. Obviously, if you have 10 or 15, eh, it may not be worth it. But think about what's in your interest. It's in your interest to get some sell through help us out. Great. And John, just to clarify, what might not be worth it? What did you mean by that if you have 10 or 15 stoves? To go through and identify each individual model and its grams per hour. 
Got it. But it is definitely worth it to submit comments and to provide that information. Absolutely. Thanks for clarifying, Rachel. You bet. All right. We have, we have a couple of questions that have come through. Uh, Rachel, uh, I'll task uh, you, I guess, with uh, we, uh, people are asking for the uh, EPA website again. So if, maybe if you go back to that slide uh, to make that. Oh, oh, that was. There we go. Um, OK. And with that, um, a, a question on uh, a manufacturer's role in this. Uh, is, is there something that uh, that manufacturers should be uh, encouraged or, or uh, contemplating submitting here? Sure. So I think manufacturers should reach out to their, their dealer network and encourage their dealers, if they have step one products left, to write comments to EPA and use this template to, to do so. This is a very retailer focused um, proposal. Uh, manufacturers are mentioned a couple times, but EPA is, they, they mention retailers much more. So they're clearly very focused on retailers here. I think manufacturers need to be that, that in between, uh, especially with retailers who are not members of HPDA and might not be getting this message to, to get this message out to their members. And remember, comments must be COVID-19 focused. Um, no comments about how EPA is a worthless agency anyway and should be abolished. That's not helpful. Anything about how NSPS should just be abolished, that's not helpful. Um, we can provide manufacturers with a template email that they can use to, to send to their dealers um, with the right wording and ask, and they can edit it as they need to for their audience, but we can provide that as well. Good deal. Um, uh, we, we are also receiving a handful of questions about uh, the slide deck uh, availability. Uh, we can send this out to everybody that is registered uh, for, for the webinar. We're happy to do that. We're also recording this and uh, we're going to make that available as, as well. So slides and uh, the, the webinar itself will be made available to you guys. And I'm going to work with Emily to see if there's any last minute questions here. Um, and I just got the uh, indication that the, that's all the questions that have come in for us at this point. So uh, we're at about the 30 minute mark. Uh, we will uh, sign off uh, at, at, uh, with that. Uh, our information, Rachel, if you want to share that last slide again, uh, if you do have a question and, and we're unable to ask it or uh, thinking about exactly what to ask, uh, all three of us are, are available uh, at, all, at all times practically. So send an email to us. We'll do everything we, we know how to do to, to get back to you. Uh, if, if you start drafting your uh, written comments and, and you want to talk this over with one of us, uh, we encourage you to do that. Uh, we're, we're happy to help. We're happy that you guys have decided to join us today. Uh, and are looking to take part in this process because, again, the, the only way it gets done is if uh, industry uh, emphatically makes the case that, that, that we do need this relief. So uh, we're here to help any way we can uh, to, to get, get us to that end. And uh, we appreciate you. Stay safe out there. And we'll talk to you soon. Thank you, guys.